you spent many years as an RAF fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. What do you think the fighter pilot you of many years ago would have made of this aircraft? I think it'd be absolutely incredible. I think if you want to put a smile on a fighter pilot's face, put them in the cockpit of an F-35 and uh, let them see the true capabilities. I'm really excited about the arrival. It's the first time the Royal Air Force has had a low observable aircraft. It's not invisible, but it does allow you to get much closer uh, to enemy defences. It makes you much less vulnerable to enemy defences. But the biggest difference is not that. Uh, the biggest difference really is the ability of the sensors to take a huge amount of data and distill it down into a, a form that means the pilot has got an incredible uh, awareness of what's going on in the environment around him. That's the real difference. That's the, the game changer, quite honestly, with F-35. I suppose the question for many of the, the men and women who are going to be working with these aircraft is, is it actually ready to go into service? It is. It is, absolutely. We've um, we built uh, almost 300 aircraft now. We're, we're well into the, the 100,000 flying hours. It's operating at 14 different bases around the world. Uh, you'll have seen recent reports that the Israeli Air Force have actually taken uh, this aircraft into a combat situation for the first time. So they've gone to full operational capability. They may be confident it's ready, but Lockheed Martin admits the F-35 is also still a work in progress. Not only a complex piece of hardware, but utterly reliant on extremely complex software. Right now, that software isn't ready for the AMRAAM missiles that the RAF and Royal Navy plan to deploy. US officials have raised concerns many different versions of the F-35 software are in use at different US bases. But Lockheed Martin promised these planes are arriving in the UK with the latest software. Is it going to need updating? In the it will future? need updating. It needs to be kept relevant. And one of the benefits of having a capability like this is that it can respond to new and emerging threats. You can incorporate new capabilities, new weapons onto the aircraft. And all of that needs to be tested, obviously, before it becomes uh, operational. And, and you're bound to find bugs in the software. This is like any uh, software test that you would do. You will find bugs. You need to address those bugs and eradicate them before you declare it operational. You talk about new and emerging threats, new weapons, but what about the AIM-20 AMRAAM? The, the, a few months ago, we were told that six tests have found significant deficiencies in actually talking between the F-35 and that weapon. That's not something that I, uh, I see as a problem in terms of the, the capability that the Royal Air Force will have uh, at the end of this year when they declare initial operational capability. But w will the plane actually be able to use that weapon to its best effect at the end of this year? Is that what you're saying? Yes, it will. But is it ready to do that now? It will by the end of the year. So that is something that still needs to be developed and updated. I think there are, there are a range of, uh, if you like, teething challenges that you're going to have as you bring an aircraft into, uh, into service. Um, I'm not saying the aircraft is perfect, but it's highly capable. It's certainly ready for operations. And by the time we declare the aircraft at the end of this year, it will be fit to deliver all of the weapons, so the, uh, the AMRAM, uh, the, the, the bombs, uh, and the sensors and the software will be ready to go by the end of this year. I'm confident in that. There was a, a particularly high-profile question in terms of the, the hardware of the planes, that there were instances of cockpits where there wasn't enough oxygen. Has that been identified and, and, and stopped? Yes, it has. You, you can say confidently that is not something that, that... It's not an issue I'm aware of, for sure, no. Confident that RAF pilots are not going to face that when they're flying these F-35s? I, I'm, I'm confident it's not an issue today. I mean, what happens in the future, I, I can't give you an absolute assurance on every element of the aircraft to say this will never fail or there will never be an issue but I've got high confidence in the, um, the life support systems on the aircraft as it comes into service today. That's not a, an issue that's causing me to lose sleep or nor should it cause uh, concern for the pilots today.